In this video we're going to take a look at some of the deeper editing options, creating sounds from scratch in Particle and using the Nautical Editor. Start off with the Nautical Seed pack with an empty mix and we'll begin with loading up an ambient voice. What I'm just going to do here now is drill down into these parameters here, which is where the nautical parameters live. And I'm just going to change the ambient gap duration range so that we get some uh, reasonably continuous sounds from this voice for this demo. Hit play. Put the loop on so it plays continuously. And there it is. Not very inspiring. So let's look at how we change that. If you go into the sounds option, this is the doorway into particle. There you can see the MIDI channel this thing is operating on, and it's using the standard wavetable, the default setting. Change the polyphony to 2, because that's all we need for a voice like this, and then click on the edit button. What we're going to do is add two ordinary oscillators to make a twin oscillator synth system. So click on the button and then we can remove the wavetable. Now you can hear the second oscillator playing because the audio runs from left to right in particle. So in order to hear both oscillators playing we need to add another unit, a junction, to tie them together. Click on plus and there's the junction. We click on that, we can now add connectors. So there's the first oscillator connected to the junction. Turn the volume down by half because two oscillators together will overload the sound system. And now we've got both oscillators sounding through that junction box. A bit hard to tell because they're playing in unison. So if we now look at the oscillators themselves, you can see there's a range of waved phones on offer. Let's swap these sign for a saws. Which are nice and rich in harmonics. What we're going to do now is shape the sound of the oscillators using the built-in envelope generators. So just soften the attack, loosen the decay, and give it a bit of a release. And then we do the same for the other oscillator. See that's starting to sound a bit more like a synth and a bit less like a tone generator. The other thing we can do is maybe offset the oscillators against each other to thicken the sound. It's started to sound a bit fatter now. The other thing we can do for that sort of classic synth fifth sound is drop one of the oscillators down by a fifth. And there it is. Okay, now that still sounds a bit static as sounds. So the traditional thing to do at this stage would be to add a filter. So you can do that by going the other side of the junction box. 
click on filter, add it, and there we go. I'm going to change this to a bandpass filter because it sounds a bit better to my ears and we'll give it some of the dry signal back. Okay, this filter is set to auto sweep as standard using the rate control here. adjust the Q or resonance of the filter and the quality adjusts the slope of the filter. So that's a fairly sort of traditional synthesizer pad sound created from scratch. But there are plenty of other things you can do in particle. If we just get rid of this filter. And look at some of the options actually in the oscillators themselves. This is a very interesting waveform, the saw triangle square. It morphs the wave between the saw triangle and square. Just switch over the second oscillator to the same wave shape. And you can hear how different the quality of the sound is. You can also see that as we change these parameters, the harmonics of the waveforms change. So we can automate that by adding an LFO. And if we scroll right down, you see Control LFO at the bottom of the menu. Just click on Add to put it to the left hand side of the first oscillator. You notice the LFO isn't on the audio path because it runs an entirely different sample rate. If you look at the LFO, it looks pretty much like any other oscillator with similar controls the same wave shapes, the frequency can be set using the frequency knob. But the more interesting thing to do is to click on this because then you can set the frequency as a division of the BPM of the mix. I'll scroll right down and set this down to the slowest. So that's the BPM divided by 32 is the frequency of the LFO. So a nice slow sweep. And now we'll just hook this up to the relevant parameters on the oscillator. Click on the plus button here to set up the links. Select the parameter we want, which is the up-down ratio. And check out the scale. As you can hear, the LFO is actually taking that parameter a bit too high, so it's killing the sound altogether. So we'll drop the scale back down a bit. Something maybe more subtle. That sounds better. Now if we like, we can add a second connector from the same LFO to, say, the square ratio. As you can see, the links there 
shown visually. And we can do exactly the same operation for the second oscillator. Okay, we'll want to scale it. You'll notice you can even invert the control, which is quite a neat feature. So again, we'll do that. So the up-down ratio on the second oscillator is moving in the opposite direction, or was. And we can adjust the square ratio. And that's starting to sound really quite nice. We've got a fairly animated sound and no filters involved. Kind of put some gloss on the sound now by going to the cell effects. Again, you'll see the MIDI channel in operation. Click on the use effects for channel effects and we'll add a chorus unit. Just mix it so we get a good blend of the wet chorus sound and the dry synth sound. And adjust to taste. starting to sound a nice animated pad sound built from scratch in the mix so all you want to do now is sprinkle some fairy dust with some reverb And there you have it. Obviously all these changes are saved with the mix when you save it and can be shared with anyone who has Mixtical.